Welcome back. It's now time to go in depth. The Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ. There's been continuous debate across the region about whether or not to abandon the Privy Council and make the regional court the final court of appeal in the Caribbean. And although much has been said until this week, we haven't really heard the CCJ's side of the story. What do the judges themselves have to say? Well, I'm pleased to announce that on the phone, we have the esteemed president of the CCJ, the Right Honorable Sir Dennis Byron. Welcome to the show, Justice Byron. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, let me say, it's unusual for the public to really hear from judges, especially uh, senior ones. The judiciary is often perceived as something abstract and distant. Is your presence and that of your judges in the media this week a conscious attempt to change that? Well, um, there's uh, an important level at which um, we think that, that there's a need for greater transparency and information about the work of the court. In, in your introductory remarks, you mentioned that the people don't know much about the Caribbean Court of Justice. And we think that it is useful for us to contribute to the discussion by providing information about the working of the court so that people will have a much better opportunity to assess the importance and value of having it be the final court of appeal in our region. Mm. Well, I certainly agree. I think it's important that we have your side of the story and your point of view in this entire discussion. Now, I remember before the CCJ actually became a reality in 2005, one of the arguments against it was that the regional judges would be more susceptible to political influence. Meanwhile, the Privy Council, it was argued, was better because the judges were uninvolved in the regional and therefore impartial. Is there any truth at all to that argument? Well, I am very, very um, strongly opposed to that type of um, commentary. I think that um, we are a regional court with, with appointed with judges of a high level of integrity who have a reputation for independence. And the selection process of the, for the appointment of judges to the Caribbean court is one which guarantees that the appointment is based upon merit. There is absolutely no opportunity for the political establishment to get involved in the selection of judges or to influence the way in which our decisions are made. So it would be similar to within a country what exists, that separation of executive and judiciary uh, in the CCJ, at the CCJ level as well, there's a separation of powers there too. At the CCJ, it's far more pronounced than within a national judiciary. Because, first of all, the CCJ is not assigned to any one government. The, the CCJ is an international court, and there are 14 contracting parties who are member states to the court. The, the no government or, or, or state has any involvement in the administration or the management of the facilities or the court operations at all. Uh, the members of the court are drawn from several different countries. And um, I think that you'll find that when international commentators have looked at the way the court has been set up, they have uh, suggested that it is a model for independence uh, and impartiality. Mm -hmm. Now, it's been seven years since the CCJ was inaugurated, yet only three CARICOM territories have accepted the court as their final court of appeal. Are you disappointed at this, and why do you think this is the case? Well, um, I look at it the other way around. I, I think that um, we already have three countries who have accepted it, and the court has had an opportunity to function effectively in those three cases, in those three countries. During this period, the court has already adjudicated uh, on, on about 79 matters, and people have had an opportunity to look at the quality of the court's work, the type of judgment it has delivered, the timeliness and efficiency of its operations. And I think that the, 
the community, Caribbean community has had a, a good opportunity to see the court at work. In terms of the other countries coming on board, um, in all of the other countries, Jamaica, Trinidad, and the Eastern Caribbean, um, the political establishment have, in fact, been making statements which indicate that they are moving towards moving on board. But they've been saying that for the past seven years. Well, um, maybe, uh, but the point is they're saying it now, and um, specific action has been taken, which I think would lead us to believe that, that, that things are, are, are developing pretty quickly. Now, during your press conference, you mentioned the cases of St. Lucia and St. Vincent, where a typographical error in the Constitution is all that's keeping them from moving towards the CCJ. How easily can that error be fixed, and what is it exactly? Well, in the uh, Eastern Caribbean constitutions, the option was provided for some countries to accede to the final appellate jurisdiction of the CCJ without having a referendum. And that um, required um, the passage of a resolution in Parliament and the agreement of the British government. Now, those provisions exist quite clearly in the constitutions of St. Kitts and of Dominica. Uh, in St. Lucia, those provisions exist, but in the wrong section of the statute. Mm. And um, under the um, constitutional arrangements, um, the errors of that nature um, may be corrected if, if the court uh, the Court of Appeal of the Eastern Caribbean considers it to be an error, they have the opportunity to make a, an, to give an advisory opinion which will set the record straight. So they just needed to I, move I it to the... That, I understand that litigation has commenced mm. to address this issue. So they just need to move it to the appropriate place. That's correct. Now, in Jamaica, the opposition says it wants a referendum on the CCJ issue. You've said this isn't necessary, but even though it isn't constitutionally, do you think it's a good idea to have one anyway? Well, that's an issue which I ought not to express a personal view on. Um, I think it's generally accepted that um, it's not legally required, and the establishment in Jamaica will have to determine whether from a political point of view, it's a good idea or not. Um, I think that there have been very strong expressions of opinion, um, which should inform the public, and I think there's enough information for the public to make a, an educated assessment of which argument um, should prevail. Now, I get the impression, listening to you speak and, and seeing the press conference, that the CCJ is trying to pitch itself as an avenue of justice for the ordinary person, not just this aloof body that decides on technical CARICOM matters that sits in Trinidad. Now, although this may seem ideal, is it really practical? Because I can't imagine ordinary people going to the Privy Council every day. Well, we think that's one of the advantages of having a court like the CCJ as the final court uh, of appeal in our region. And even in our original jurisdiction, where we are managing the issues with regard to the CARICOM, um, the single market economies, uh, single market and, 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 uh, and economy. Now, in Jamaica, for example, although Jamaica has not yet um, acceded to the uh, final appellate jurisdiction, an ordinary citizen of Jamaica uh, is currently uh, a litigant before the Caribbean Court of Justice in trying to establish uh, constitutional or, or, or treaty rights on the CSME. That's the Shanique Myra case. That's correct. So that is um, some evidence that the average and or, or average ordinary citizens in our country would have access to the Caribbean Court of Justice. Now, last question very quickly because we're pretty much out of time. Now, the CCJ has been embracing technology, internet, streaming, touchscreen, and all this. Uh, do you guys, do you think that video recordings of that video recording that cameras should be allowed in the courtrooms in 
other islands, in the Supreme Court, in the High Court of other places, other countries? Well, again, I, I think that that's not for me to say uh, in this type of um, forum. What I can say is this, that the, we have taken a decision at the CCJ that official transcripts of our proceedings, both in audio and video format, uh, public records of our operations. So any member of the public can access a full video recording of the proceedings before the CCJ, just on the payment of the um, small charge to cover the expenses um, as has been established. So we have established that as a way in which our court operates. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Justice Byron. Now, as the president of the Caribbean Court of Justice, the Right Honorable Sir Dennis Byron, giving some valuable insights into the workings of the CCJ. Well, I can tell you another place where regional matters are often decided. That's in a sporting arena. Alexis Nunes is here with the latest in the world of sports. Matters are 